Pumpkin Palooza. I'm so excited. This is an open collaboration that I got invited to participate in. My name's already on the playlist, so I gotta get busy in the kitchen and get something pumpkin made. I've been craving muffins, but because you know I like to do extra, we're going to make a stuffed cream cheese muffin with a crumble topping. Mmm, doesn't that just sound delicious and scream fall? We almost had a catastrophe, my friends. It was almost a bad thing. I uh, had to dig really deep to find some pumpkin. I canned some a few years back and I thought, oh, I had several jars left and lo and behold, no, I did not. Barely, ding, barely found two. And I think that's what I'm gonna need today because you know, I don't wanna just make one batch of muffins. Why not make four? Don't worry, you can uh, follow along with me, but I'll still go ahead and put all the ingredients down below so that you can make a regular size batch at home. But I tend to do a lot of baking for my community and I have a little farm stand out here and I sell goodies and I haven't made anything homemade for a while because I've been so busy making cookies for the pumpkin patch that I haven't made any breads or muffins. So I thought, you know what? I will make some for us and some for others. So I wanna go ahead and get this to draining right away because it'll take a little bit to get all this liquid out. Back to that in a little bit. The pumpkins I used were not pie pumpkins, so they're gonna be a little bit more liquidy. So I may adjust the recipe a little bit as we go. And I make a super jumbo, big, you know, coffee shop style. So first things first, we need to get some brown sugar. You know what I do? I trim the top off, and then if I don't have one of those nice little clippies around, I'll just take the top and use it as my little tie, tie a knot in it, and then my brown sugar is fine until I can deal with it later and put it in my regular containers. Need some cinnamon. Get my cinnamon in bulk. You're gonna need a teaspoon. Four for me. A little bit of flour. I'll have my flour down here because this is my flour tub. Yes, I do lots and lots of baking. I go through lots and lots of flour. So I buy in bulk and then I use these tubs to store them in. And then I have them on a little rolling cart and it moves around. Perfect. Now isn't this the cutest little spatula I ever did see? It's a cow! My daughter got it for me. So I'm gonna use that to just kind of stir up this butter and make sure it's nice and melted. Also wanna kind of break up the brown sugar a little bit, mix it all in before I add the wet ingredients. Another fun option would be to add some oatmeal to this. I love oatmeal in my crumble toppings, but I don't think I will do that today. Maybe if I made some apple muffins, which that would be good. I've got some homemade applesauce in there. You could probably take this exact recipe and switch it out with several different fruits. Pear, peach, here we go. Ooh, look at all that delicious butter. Butter makes everything better, right? Sure it does. I don't have a cameraman, it's just me. So today I set up the camera at a little bit of a distance. I'll try to bring you in every once in a while. We'll let you see what I'm doing. Ooh. Sometimes these are your best tools. Just make sure you get them nice and clean before you get started. Nice crumbly topping. Some are big pieces and some are smaller. That's what makes it yummy. Okay, so here's my chunks of the pumpkin. I'm going to add them with the whisk attachment on the KitchenAid. So 
now that our pumpkin puree has been made, let's go ahead and measure it out. I do still see a little bit of liquid in there, so I'm definitely going to have to adjust the recipe accordingly. We might have to add a little less milk, a little more flour, and that's okay. I love kitchen gadgets. A quart of pumpkin cubes made one pint of puree. And we'll start on that cream cheese filling now. Who doesn't love cream cheese? And then we're gonna add some eggs. Eggs will help kind of bind that filling and make it more um, baker friendly. This is why we do this in case you lose a shell. We'll need more later. We're going to need some regular sugar. And I believe there's one more ingredient. Oh, yes. Vanilla. I make my own vanilla. It's really easy. Maybe someday I'll do a video. I don't really measure, and I always use way more than the recipe calls for. Let's cream this. Hey, guys. I'm back. We're gonna get started on the main part of the muffin. Big tub of flour. I am adjusting the recipe just a little bit. It calls for one and three quarters cup. We're using two because this pumpkin, remember, is homemade. So it's just a little more loose. Now the leavening agents. Whether the recipe calls for it or not, I use both baking powder and baking soda in my muffins. It gives them a little extra fluff. And you want that with your bakery style muffins. You want a nice dome top. You don't want a flat top. Those are for cupcakes for decorating with lots of frosting. I usually say if the recipe calls for a tablespoon of one, then I'll maybe add a teaspoon of the other. This one happens to call for equal parts. So that was easy. It's a little less cinnamon than it calls for too. So I just think that's a lot, especially since we're gonna add the pumpkin pie seasoning. I looked everywhere this year for it. I make a snack mix and I use it in the snack mix and I could not find it. But I found apple pie mix and it worked well, but it doesn't have ginger in it. Looked in the back of the cabinet, one unopened package just for today's recipe. So when I measure, I'm pretty generous most of the time. Brown sugar, good thing I hadn't put that away yet. You know, brown sugar is basically just white sugar with molasses. I definitely could be making my own, but I'll tell you a little secret. I got a really good deal on this brown sugar. I actually found it on sale one day and I bought like, I don't know, 10 bags. It was crazy. But for me, 10 bags doesn't last long because honestly, this is my last bag. So now I maybe I will have to make more. And it also calls for regular sugar. Yep, I keep my sugar in these too. There we go. There, I'll put it back. I have my eggs and my pumpkin puree in there. Oops, I forgot, we need vegetable oil. Two whole cups for a quadruple batch. This will keep things moist along with the pumpkin puree. I'm gonna put it in this bowl because I like to keep my wet and dry separate in the very beginning. I'm just gonna put a little vanilla extract in this time because I put a lot in the, um, in the filling and I got a little too liquidy I'm afraid. It's okay, it's not over yet. And then we're gonna need some milk. Okay, this is fresh Jersey cream line milk, so we gotta give it a good shake, 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 shake. Because that cream rises to the top. I think what I'm gonna do 
is go down to one and a little bit extra, whatever this holds. There we go. Because I, I just know it's going to be a liquidy dough. Big bowls call for big tools. You know, the recipe doesn't call for this, but I kind of think pecans could be good. Should we add some pecans to that crumble? Hmm. I love pumpkin and pecans. Don't you? Tell me what's your favorite nut. Okay, just mix together. Just don't want any big clumps of anything, that's all. Typically with muffins, once you add the liquid to the dry, you are going to not want to stir so much. I don't know if you can see me or not. And it's okay if you make a mess. I'm kind of used to doing this. And you know what? You can also do this to mix things. Oh gosh, guys. Can you smell this? Oh my word. Mmm. Can you smell it? It's good. We have turned the air conditioner off here at the farm because we had a big cool spell. And I left it on for the longest time. We had about three nice days over the weekend. And now today that I'm back in the kitchen, it's a hot one in this house. I probably should have turned the air back on. That's okay. We're gonna fold the ingredients in, meaning you're not stirring. You're just kind of flipping it around until you don't see big pieces of flour anymore. I have made an executive decision. I'm putting pecans because I just think it's gonna elevate that flavor so much. I mean, look at this. Don't you think that looks way more delicious now? I mean, it is in my kitchen. I have to change the recipe. It's what I do. Yep, yep, yep. I think everyone will like this. And with it being on the topping, the nuts will get nice and toasty. Let's go ahead and use these hands again. See if we can't get those nuts in some of these crumble bits. Kind of squeeze it. Kind of reminds me of when you're in the garden or out in the field and you need to know if it's too wet to plant. You'll squeeze it real hard, and if it is in a lump like this, but yet it easily crumbles, you know it's good to go. Did you know you were gonna get gardening tips on a cooking video? Now it's time to preheat the oven. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on my convection oven, just because it makes it handy. We're gonna do 425. I know it sounds really high, but trust me, in the very beginning, you need it to do this. You want that big dome top, don't ya? Trust me. Okay. Now it's time to do a job that we can do while we're sitting. Because you know what? Sometimes you just gotta sit. I have yet to find muffin tins that properly fit my muffins. So I got creative and started making my own. I have parchment sheets for when I make my artisan breads and I would take them and I would quarter them. And then when I went to order more, I found that they have these in all different sizes. And they even had circle ones. So I took a cup and you can see how I was going around and around and it makes the perfect muffin cup. Voila, that's it. Okay, I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna do the rest of these. And then we'll be back and I'll show you how to stuff them. The alarm just went off. And so the oven is preheated. I have these two monster scoops because, you know, monster muffins mean monster scoops. But this time, I won't 
won't be filling them completely full. I'm just going to put half to three quarters of a scoop in each of these muffin tins, each of these little cups. Not only does that help the wrapper kind of get a good placement, now it leaves room for the next step, which will be our cream cheese. Plop. Here we go, cream cheese. So basically I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put a layer of the cream cheese on each of the muffins. Like I said, it is quite liquidy and I blame myself completely for this. I like to do an assembly line way of doing these things because two reasons. One is I just have the same thing going at the same time. And two is if I have a little extra, if I'd already put that second layer on there, then I wouldn't have anywhere to go with it. Or if I put too much on there, I can sneak a little off one. Because as you can tell, I'm not measuring precise at all. Layer three. Another half a scoop or so. Kind of spread it out a little bit. Try to cover the tops of the cream cheese. It's okay if we don't get it perfect because we still got that crumble to go on there. Just want to kind of spread it out a little. About even with the top of the pan. Now the best part, the crumble. We'll start with just a scoop on each one. I'm sure we'll need to go back through and do more. Just divide it out evenly. Looks like we're gonna reach close to the top of the muffin uh, liners that we made. This is why I make my own. I like them to go well above and beyond the muffin pan itself. Now you don't wanna squish this down, you're just sprinkling it on top. That butter that you put in there will kinda of help hold it together. Into the oven they're going to go. This first batch will go for about seven minutes. Remember for seven minutes because they are the super jumbo muffins. They're not just a big muffin, they're a super big muffin. So we're gonna let them cook a little bit longer. Then we're gonna turn the temperature down a bit. I'll bring you back then. Okay, the timer's going off. This is what the muffins look like. They're just kinda starting to say hello. We're gonna go ahead and set them on for another, let's see, at 350. And here they are. Ooh. Now this is where great patience comes in. We have to wait and let them cool before we can taste them. We can do this. Okay. I'm bagging or boxing them up and let me tell you I'm kind of having a hard time getting them to fit in the box they're so ginormous don't they look delicious though I've got a muffin this one right here it's calling my name shall we open it Oh man, you see that layer of cream cheese there? Oh, oh, oh. Still warm, I couldn't wait. Look at that. Mm -mm. Mm. Mm hmm This is a good muffin, for sure. Mm. 
Okay, I gotta stop. Gotta get these out in the farm stand. Fresh muffins for the farm stand. Thank you so much for coming along on Pumpkin Palooza video today. I really hope that you enjoy the recipe and that you try it and let me know what you think. I appreciate you coming along. Make sure that you be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not already part of the family. And you have a great day. Bye.